Wake up at Holiday Inn Express to a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. Count on all the hot, fresh coffee you need and an incredible breakfast buffet that has something for everyone, like eggs, cinnamon rolls, and even hot, fresh pancakes with all the toppings you crave. Next time, do yourself a favor and stay at a Holiday Inn Express with a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. So, when you wake up at Holiday Inn Express, you'll wake up happy, a part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. Hey y'all, Darius Rucker here. You know, a lot of people ask me, what inspires your music? And one of the big things is a strong sense of place. That's why I love my home state of South Carolina and want to share the awesome things it has to offer. From the beautiful mountains down to the sunny coast, it's got it all. Not to mention two of my personal favorites, great golf and amazing food. Come see why I love this place. Visit discoversouthcarolina.com. This one's about Pete Kelly. It's about the world he goes around in. It's about the big music and the big trouble and the big funnies. When they ask you, tell them this one's about the blues. Pete Kelly's blues. Pete Kelly's Blues, starring Jack Webb, with story by Jim Moser, music by Dick Cathcart. Number 417 Sherry Street is a standard speakeasy. The help is paid in cash, the books are burned at the end of the month. Every week we use 30 cases of booze and a pound of coffee. After salaries, there's gas and lights, and a payoff to the prohibition boys. In Kansas City, the price is good. For a hundred bucks, they steer in the drunks and make one raid a year. The place is run by George Lupo. He's a quiet little guy who wouldn't give you the sweat off an ice pitcher. The beer's green, and the gin's as young as yesterday, and the music's loud. I'm Pete Kelly. I play cornet. We start every night about ten o'clock, and we play till they sweep out the broken glass. Uh, we don't draw any customers. We don't chase any away. The music is straight New Orleans. Started in the front parlors of Storyville and drifted up north. Some but laid over in Chicago. That's where I got on. And rode it out here with a piano player named Doggy. Well, he's still with the band, but last night he was barely with it. We took a break about 11. Doggy was late getting back. Might as well have stayed in there because he kept looking around the room and the way the piano sounded, you'd think he had on the catcher's mitt. That'll do it. Let's get off for a while, huh? Sorry, Pete. Running a little behind you, mate. You haven't left the station. What's the matter, Augie? I'm nervous. Take a look around. Near the door, back this way. What? Well, well, forget it. Have Jake open a couple of windows. Take a walk. Get yourself in shape, huh? Not till I find out which way to fall. Boys are here for heavy duty. I learned that out in the kitchen. Now, let's duck behind the stand. All right, what about it? You know that's good, me? I drink his beer, that's all. Well, somebody shot for me yesterday out near Highway 40. That's too bad. He'd have drawn a good crowd downtown. Who killed him? I don't know, but whoever he is is in for a big night. The police are trying for him. So is his partner. Well, let him play. How does our place fit into it? I couldn't guess, but we'll find out soon. See the big guy that just walked in the door? Yeah. Boss cop? Almost. It's Eddie Newman. That's Courtney's partner. Come on. We better get back in the stand. Kelly. Yeah. My name's Newman. Come on, Sutton. Well, we're due to play. I'll hear you later. Come on. You hear about Dutch, Courtney? Pick him out of the mud tonight. Means nothing to me. Does to me. Dutch was a friend. Well, if it'll help, cry. 
I'm short on time, Kelly. Now, give me a rundown on Gus Trudeau. There's nothing to say. He played for a while and he went to the boneyard. You know him, you know his sister. You'll have to ask Courtney about that. I haven't seen her since the old days. You know Gus well enough to figure he didn't like Dutch Courtney. He didn't like him one pound. Well, you can't blame him. Dutch sidestepped and paid Trudeau's way to jail. Bookkeeping, I don't know anything about it. All right, look, Newman, you're on the wrong track. This is a job killing. Your boy got frisky and somebody sent down a Chicago gun. The price tag shows. Sorry, Trudeau's my pick. What did he hit him with? A high powered rifle? Gus Trudeau's away up in Leavenworth. He used to be. Gus went over the wall this morning. When he shows up, I want him. Well, why pick me? Now, ask around. He'll head for you. He's broke. He'll need train fare. No, not if he killed Dutch Courtney. Somebody will give him a railroad. When they dragged the blues out of the back room and moved them up front, there were three of the best leading the parade. They were all blowing cornets. One was Buddy Bolden, one was King Oliver, and the other was Gus Trudeau. Oh, he was a lot of music, but not much man. He picked me up on a union date on the south side of Chicago and taught me how to play. He got into me for a Boston three-star cornet and gin for the rest of his life. When he got down to running errands for Dutch Courtney, I left for Kansas City. A couple of months later, Courtney needed a patsy, and Trudeau was it. He wound up with a five-year stand at Leavenworth. But Gus never felt right unless he was in trouble. Only this time, he cut me in for a piece, too. Well, I picked up a drink at the bar and fought my way back to the stand. Anything wrong? No. Did you finish the set? One more to go, Jazzy. All right, let's do it. What's wrong with you? A friend of ours killed Dutch Courtney. Jasmine. Off for a while. Now, who did you say killed Dutch Courtney? That's Trudeau. What where? Where? Trudeau's in jail. No, not since this morning. Which one of you is killing? I am. A friend of yours in town wants to see you right away. Who is it? He's waiting up at your room. Did he give a name? Just Gus. <laughs> an hour later, I was still looking for an out. It was a little after 2 a.m. Our base man, Red, loaned me his car keys, and I slipped out. I got on to 12th Street and picked up his Erskine Coupe and headed up for my room. All the way out Grand Avenue, the streetlights were spending the rest of New Year's alone. Some guys with wide brooms were pushing at the confetti, and the fog was loafing down in Washington Square. When I got to my place, I parked the car in back and headed up the stairs. College kids down at the end of the hall had their door open. Their party sounded young. I was looking for Gus when I opened the door, but he had a substitute. I knew it away back at 18th and Halstead. She was pretty in the fastest French in town. That must have been a long time ago, because somewhere along the line she'd run into a batch of Wednesday weekends. She wasn't pretty anymore. Hello, Pete. Where's your brother? I don't know where Gus is. That's why I'm here. I knew you'd be the first one he'd come to. Yeah. Now what about the break? I was up to see him two weeks ago. He didn't say anything about it. 
Pete, we've got to help him. I've been hearing that since I met him. You're the only one who remembers Pete, you're the only one who cares. Yeah, well, a lot of people care now. Eddie Newman wants him. The cops are looking hard. I've got to find him before they do. You've got to help Pete. He was supposed to meet me. That's all I know. I'll wait for him. He needs a hand, Pete. He's in deep. Yeah, well, he's always in deep. Now, you do what you want, Madge. I ran front for Gus too long. I'm out of the habit now. Please. Gus wants cover. He can look for a police station. Gus can get away. Some money in a car. That's all he needs. It's going to take more than that to get out. Every cop in town's working tonight. Oh, give him a chance, Pete. Help him. No, no, thanks. Gus has been good to you, Pete. He taught you music. He's been nothing but good to you. I'm paid up. I bought his gin for five years. And do it for me. For what I used to be with. No, it's old. It was 80 years ago. I can't help this. Do it for me. I haven't changed that much. I have. You're still the same. You've been working at it. You remember. Yeah. Hmm. It's the same, Dee just like the first time. You never had a first time. How about a drink? Will you help me, Pete? Fine, Gus. Get him out of town. All right. Ten bucks. As far as I go. Ten bucks and a quarter. Now I'm getting off. Where are you going? Back to work. Tell Gus to take care of himself. Hold it right there, Pete. You stay too long in Chicago, Madge. I bought the gun in Kansas City. Don't go for the door. You better give it to Gus. He may need it. We're going to find him. You're going to help me. All right, come on. Give me the gun, Madge. If I shoot, it'll hurt. Yeah. Come on. Put it away, Madge. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Who is she? The trade. Who are you? Cage. I work downtown on homicide. Who you got on your floor? Madge Trudeau. Tell me about her. I knew her in Chicago. After that, I heard she did favors for Dutch Court. After that, I don't know. Is she tired? What's she doing here? Looking for Gus Trudeau. Where is Gus? I don't know. I've been asked that twice tonight. This is the third time I don't know. You probably will. Why? Why do I have to get into this? Because you're Gus Trudeau's friend. Then let's get him another one. I'm tired of the job. I don't blame you, fella. You'll come out of this with a lot of trouble. For instance. I'll make it simple. If Gus Trudeau shows and you turn him over to Newman, we'll send you up as an accessory to murder. If he shows and you turn him over to us, Newman will probably kill you. Oh, that's real good. In the meantime, what do you guys do for a living? We're busy. We couldn't prove Newman kills him. It's after two. Get back to that club. We'll leave you here? I got work to do. Like what? This woman. I'll see if I can get anything out of her. Well, it's been done before, but I'll bet ten to one in your case. Go on back. We're outside here. Good night, cop. Leave the rugs. <laughs> I left Cade standing in the middle of the room looking down at Madge Trudeau. He didn't watch me leave, but I figured it wouldn't be too long before he'd turn that gleam back on me. Well, I went back to 417 and ran into our piano man, Augie, outside in the alley trying to steal some clean air. Happy holidays, Stevie. How's that? How did you see him? I oh, forget him. I got it all figured out for the two of us, Stevie. Today we'll spend our time dodging destiny. We'll hit for some small back room. I'll bring the bottle goods and we'll live on gin and sauerkraut and make the walls fit up and listen. One horn, one piano. The blues, Peter. We'll ride them in the middle of next year. All right, save it. Will you just set me straight? Right now. Across the river, there's two places. The High Life Club or Fat Annie's. You sure he's there? That's what the word is. I'll pass the hat down at the Union Hall for both of you. He's just alone over there. He is now, but there's going to be a crowd. What do you mean? I told you. Yeah. When I didn't know when he gets back, I got to tell him. <laughs> I knew it was a silly move. Newman had a hundred guns on tour for Gus. Cage and the boys from headquarters were standing by for seconds. Helping Gus Trudeau was out of order, but I couldn't get one thing out of my mind. If Gus did kill Courtney, why didn't he pick up some travel money before he did it? I was backward. If you're going to hang up your pants, you take them off first. Well, it was about 3 a.m. when I got down to the river and crossed over to the Kansas side. The High Life Club was smoked up and had a little of everything, except Gus Trudeau. I looked in the kitchen and tried a back room. Then I went to the bar to see if I could drum up some talk. I had one taker, a boy with wavy black hair. He got up from a table of three others, walked over and sat down next to me. Hello. Come in your office? No, it's the first turn. Welcome, then. Buy a drink? No, I'm all set. Try one yourself. Oh, I think drinking is all right, but I hate people to drink too much, don't you? You work here? Well, not regularly. Sometimes I dance and the other act doesn't show up. You here alone? Waiting for some. Waiting for a guy named Gus Trudeau. You one of his friends? I'm it. 
Where is he? He left a while ago. I'm not sure where he went. Well, get sure. It's important. I mentioned someone named Beth here. Right, hold it. Well, what are you here, Kelly? All right, get away, Newman. Try another stool. That's all, though. He asked you to leave. I think you should leave. Well, well. Quiet, boy. That's nice. Leave him alone. Who is he? I never saw him before. What's he know about Trudeau? Nothing. Don't kid me. You're not here to spend the time of day. You're here for Trudeau. You, little friend, where's Gus Trudeau? I don't have to talk to you. I'm a guest in this place. You're not anymore. Now climb down and head for that door, both of you. You can't make us do that. We're not going to leave. This football buster, I don't like the way he pushes. That's right. Just walk. I'll bet you look good. I knew right then. As we walked out, I knew Eddie Newman wasn't going to leave him alone. He was going to pick at him, whether he knew anything about Gus Trudeau or not. It was going to get messy. And the boy with the nice eyes was going to help. Outside, it wasn't snowing anymore, but the ground was covered right down to the river. The moon out, and it looked all right, if you like nature. We walked over toward a bunch of trees. Newman's car was parked there, a black touring sedan with a strong-armed guy in the back seat. There was another one sitting on the running board. He had a machine gun across his lap. This will do. All right. Now let's hear about Gus Trudeau. I don't know anything about him. This man and I were just talking. Go easy, Newman. I never saw him before. He always talked to strangers. That he does. None of your business. Well, that's Gus Trudeau. I, I wouldn't tell you. Suppose I knew I wouldn't tell you. Oh, yes, you would. <laughs> Get your hands off of me. Stop pressing, Newman. You don't care about Trudeau. Now you just don't like this guy. They are, Kelly. Come here, you. <laughs> Stop screeching. I'll break your arm off. Keep your hands off of me, you big, dirty pig. You're in trouble, fella. Shut up. He is a pig. His hands are dirty and his teeth are dirty. I'll fit him in his clothes are dirty. Oh, that night. <laughs> Now, lay there. All right, Dave, move in here. Back away, Kelly. You're up, choir boy. No, please, please, Mr. Do something. Don't let a thing like this happen. It already has, Buster. No, Come on, Dave. It's getting cold. <laughs> Newman climbed into the car and they drove off. I stayed there a minute to look at the guy in the snow. His face was unmarked. I did him a favor. I rolled him over so it showed in the moonlight. I knew his mother'd want him to look good the night Eddie Newman's chopper squad cut him down. Well, I named Bessie had to mean Fat Annie's place up the river on the Kansas side. I made it there and found Bessie. She was back at the piano wandering around somewhere in the middle of the blues... You couldn't miss that voice if she took up your day. Let's be sure. Hi, Pete. Hi, Bessie. What do you know? Round back, Pete. You go up the stairs. The loft. Way up there at the top. Thanks, Bessie. Okay, Pete. All right, then. I felt my way out around back and up a couple of flights of stairs that didn't creep in time with the music. There was a door at the top. I pushed it open. He was hunched back on a pile of hay in the corner. He sat up and blinked a couple of times. There wasn't much left, just a frame. And rattling around inside, a lot of tired echoes that wouldn't lay down and die. There was an empty gin bottle on the floor. Katie, I knew you'd just Yeah, well, I didn't make it easy. You're looking good, Katie. Everything's six to an even, huh? You forget easy, Gus. You're in a jam. You broke jail. Yeah, I told him all about you up there, Petey. I told him there's another Gus Trudeau blowing down in Kansas City. I'm proud of you, Pete. Yeah, sure, Gus. You're just like me, Pete. I told him all about you. You're the only good thing I ever done. I knew you'd come through. Car and some money, Pete. You'll do everything. You'll make it all new. Is it too much to ask? You tell me, Pete. They want you for Dutch Courtney. You know better, Pete. I didn't kill Dutch. Well, you had a reason. Did I? I forget. He hung a frame on you, Gus. Five years worth, remember? I didn't kill Dutch. Get me a drink, my boy. No, not tonight. Don't preach at me. Just something to help me all along. Well, yeah, now come in out of the fog, Gus. You're going to get a drink or a train ticket for me. Take your pick, because it's the last time around. Just listen to that. Bessie's still going strong, ain't she? Yeah, and so are the cops. I got one idea for you, Gus. Get moving. Remember Chicago, Pete? You and Madge. Chicago always liked me. You checked out, Gus Biderbeck's got your chair. You remember me and you, Petey. I found you when you were nothing. What are you going to do? Where are you going? I got it all set up. It's big and brand new. Place in Mexico. Yeah? 
The guy who bunked in my cell with me, his mother runs a place down there. He'd be just like it used to be. Well, you won't get there on a gin bottle. I got it set up, boy. I got him some money. It's not much to ask. I haven't got a drink here yet. You've been drinking Mexico. Where are you dreaming up the car in the dough? It's fixed, boy. You just see this guy and tell him I'm ready. Abe Gaffney. He's got a place on Pershing Road. You know it? Yeah, I know it. Abe's doing all this? Just tell him I'm ready. How's Madge? She's all right. Come and see me, huh? It's hot down in Mexico. It gets hot here. What's the matter, Pete? You ain't sore, are you? No, I ain't sore. I'm just tired. I'll tell Gaffney and then I'm checking out. Goodbye, guys. You're not getting too big for your old friends, are you, boy? Friends are like everything else, guys. Yeah? They wear out on you. It wasn't any different than a dozen times before. I knew there wasn't very much left, but I wasn't looking for a second-rate ghost with an empty gin bottle. Well, I crossed the river to the Missouri side, headed down Main Street, and then I swung over toward Abe Gaffney's place on Pershing Road. It was pushing close to 5.30 a.m. Sun wasn't up yet, and the night was too tired to care. I pulled up in front of a Murad sign out in front of Gaffney's. Inside, a counterman with pimples and coffee was leaning on last night's paper. A beaded curtain shut off the hallway that led back to Gaffney's room. You want something? Yeah, Gaffney. Not here. Where do I find him? I don't know. I was supposed to meet him here. That's all. Look, this is Gaffney's place. Where is he? I told you. Now, listen, Junior. Maybe you think you do a good imitation of Calvin Coolidge, but I want an answer. Where's Gaffney? What's your name? Kelly. You could have saved an argument this way. Through the curtain. When do you go to bed, Kelly? You still looking, Newman? Still asking. Where's Guts? I don't think he'd give me time to answer. There's a good reason why I let you walk away tonight. I gave you two hours all by yourself on the Kansas side. I don't think you threw him away. You got a line on Gus Trudeau, and I want it. I got nothing for you. Don't be silly, Pete. The cops get him or I do. He goes either way. You get no help from me. I don't want help. I want Gus. Now, come on! Come on! Come on, or I'll make you part of the wallpaper. You better send for Dave. I don't need it. I think you do. I don't bother to get up. I'm leaving. I don't believe it. Oh. Wasn't your turn, Kelly. When I got up off the floor, the room was cold and the lights were out. Newman was gone, but I knew he was still in business. I know if he didn't find Gus Trudeau this trip, he'd come back for me. Well, I got into Red's car and followed the radiator camp back to 417. I found off in the back of the stand at King Webster. Did you bring an egg, Peter? Kitten's closed down. Newman been back here? I haven't noticed. You look abused. Yeah. Did anybody say anything? Oh, little missed. You heard the news? What's that? They found the guy who got Fetch Corton. Fellow by the name of Doyle. East St. Louis. Cops got the goods on it. Gun, fingerprints, the work. What was his beef with Dutch? Doyle owned East St. Louis. Dutch wouldn't believe it. Leave it to Gus. There's a hole he'll fall in it. Makes it easier, doesn't it? Newman will call his boys off now. Somebody better tell him in a hurry. Did you see Gus? Yeah, I saw him. He's trying to get out of town. That's right. Hey, Gus, please. Well, you're a hard man to find. Newman came in the front door. I went out the back. It's going to take long. Car keys and money for Gus. Well, you got the wrong guy, Abe. I quit an hour ago. Write it out with yourself. Car's out in the alley. Gray Chandler. Tell Gus it's low on gas. Now, wait a minute. You can take this stuff to Gus. You know where he is. No, thanks. You take care of Gus. He's an old friend. What's the matter with you? I hardly know him. The clock over the bar said 6.15. We got back on the stand and started the last set. Eighty pounds of stale cigarette smoke was holding up the ceiling, waving down in the dirty blue curtain over the dance floor. Behind the bar, one of the guys was wiping up. Two couples picked their way to the dance floor and pushed each other around a while and finally gave up. Oh, the whole thing it was all out of step. Wrinkled stockings, brown gardenies, torn paper hats, and Gus Trudeau. He walked in the door and stood off to one side, just back of the stage. Hey, Pete. Gus got here. He's safe now. 
Don't make book on it. All right, last one. The blues and B flat. That's it. Same call all tonight, 10 o'clock. You can talk. Hey, Petey, over here. I heard you. It sound good, Pete. Just what I told him up there. You're on your way, boy. All right, now you heard it, Gus. Here's the money. In the car, please. I'll see you, Gus. You know what I told him? Another Gus Trudeau was blown down to Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. All right, boy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Gus. Hi, man. Hold it there, Pete. The family fight. Stay off. I thought I took that gun away from you. What's the matter, man? What are you doing? Don't tell me that talk, Gus. Dutch can't hear you. What do you mean, man? You killed him. You blew your top and killed him just like you did everything else for me. You and that gin and that cheap brass horn of yours. You spent us all. Pete and me, you ran through the whole bunch and you got to Dutch. I didn't do it. You killed Dutch Courtney. I loved him. I loved him enough to square it. You got it wrong, man. Goodbye, Gus. I'll tell him to throw your horn in after you. <laughs> Madge. He killed the wrong brother. Stay away, Pete. It's in the paper, Madge. You have the name of Doyle. He killed Dutch. They're not sure. Are they? They're sure. What will I do? I got two things for you, Madge. And the car keys. Now you see what you can do with ten minutes start. You didn't have anything more for Gus, did you see? No, I guess not. Well, maybe. Oh, that's why I got out of town. Pete Kelly's Blues, starring Jack Webb, and story by Jim Moser, music by Dick Cathcart, scoring by Matty Matlock. Pete Kelly's Blues is based on characters created by Richard L. Breen. Wake up at Holiday Inn Express to a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. Count on all the hot, fresh coffee you need and an incredible breakfast buffet that has something for everyone, like eggs, cinnamon rolls, and even hot, fresh pancakes with all the toppings you crave. Next time, do yourself a favor and stay at a Holiday Inn Express with a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. So, when you wake up at Holiday Inn Express, you'll wake up happy, a part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.